Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to cover the command design pattern. Pattern itself aims to separate some kind of thing and what happens to it from where it happens. Imagine we have a gun and we can shoot it by pulling the trigger. We're invoking the action of shooting. Now we want to be able to separate what it is that we're actually shooting. The projection is what is happening to it. So that's the action that is what's happening to the projectile, the thing that is receiving it, right? The trigger is the happening. This is what we're doing. Pulling the trigger shoots off either a bullet, a fake bullet, maybe a water because it's a water gun. In this video, we're going to take step by step by building up all the different ways that we can try to compose three different parties of what we're working on, what is happening to it, and what is causing something to happen to that thing we're working on. If you're enjoying the videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Starting off with a real simple example, we have a command. This is just an interface for something that can happen. So this is one component here. Now we need to do that something on something. In our case, it is going to be text. From the command names like highlight text and bold text, like make it bold, you should be able to understand that we are getting some kind of text. This is some object that we're about to perform the, the operation contained within the command. And what the operation is going to do should be very apparent. So highlighting and bolding the text. These are the commands. So we're highlighting or bolding and we're applying it to the text. Now the part of where it happens. Usually if you have a text editor, you can select a button, you can click on it and it will highlight the text while, while you're selecting it. Well, we have a button, we pass a command to it, we can click on it and that will cause the execution. Now, if we take an example that is maybe a little bit more complicated or has a little bit more substance to it, still in the same domain, we're still trying to highlight text. We still have our command, although now bolding the text just makes it bold, makes it a little bit thicker on the letters, right? The lines are a little, are a little bit thicker. When we highlight the text, we can pick the color, we can pick the height, how thick is the highlight, maybe it's italic highlight. I don't know, maybe we want to humanize the highlight. When I draw my highlight, you know, my hand is not like surg surgical precision. It's going to be a little bit wonky. Maybe we want to introduce that, right? That's going to go in the highlight configuration. This is where, if you can imagine what a command looks like, it's essentially a little package that you're going to bundle up. So before you go ahead and execute the highlight, you create your highlight text, you take the thing that we're going to act on. So we're taking the text, we're putting it inside the command. And then the next thing that we're putting in there is the configuration. So the configuration is going to control how that thing is going to happen on the text. We then bundle it up and we store it somewhere. So once we press that button, uh, that's what's going to get executed on the text that we're highlighting. I know text can look a little bit more complicated because it's not just a string, it's like a position within the whole Word document and whatnot. What we're trying to do here is build up an image of bundling up a package. And then once we need it, once we need to execute it, whenever the trigger fires, that's when we apply the command. And then the bold doesn't have any additional parameters in the constructor. This just shows how differently commands can be configured even though they're going to be hiding behind the same interface. Both the simple and this example require you to have some kind of public knowledge about the text, right? So we're not able to look at the internals of the text. And if it's some other complex objects, we will not be able to look at the internals and perform whatever internal op operations we want here. Sometimes that object is going to come with internal operations. So here, instead of text string, we have the text content. We still have our highlight configuration and we can pass it into the highlight text here or we can grab it somehow. It doesn't really matter too much. But what we're doing here is we're essentially packaging up what we want to do on the text content within the command. If we pay attention here, we're creating the text content. We're setting that as the state on what we want to work on. And then we're specifying what we want to do. So now we've essentially bundled up an action we can also supply some kind of state into the dynamic command. So we've gone through some setup process and we've bundled this bit up and ready to execute later whenever we have the event occur. If you work with ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET and you've ever used MVC and you can think of the action on the controller as that command bundled up and once the event of the HTTP call occurs, you fire off the relevant command. 
Moving further, in the book they explain how commands can be used to implement undoable operations. And this really makes sense, right? If you just have step-by-step -step commands that are executed in a list or a stack, so you build up the stack of commands and then you pop them, you're essentially going gonna either go forward or backwards, right? Even if we have a tabletop game where I roll a dice, so something happens, I roll a dice, there is some state of the number on the die, like five, six, four, we then take the number, we bundle that into the command or pass it as a parameter into the command, which is then going to act on the piece. So the state from the die is preserved on the command. So we say move forward five pieces, the command itself is stored in the list, and the number five, which we moved forward, is stored on there as well. Because we should have the amount, the number which we move forward, or here we have the text that we've highlighted, so we should be able to track the range of the text, so which particular piece have we highlighted. We've placed that command on the stack, and if we want to pop it, if we want to undo that command, we call the undo function, we still have access to the state that we used to originally append or add this command. This allows us to easily reverse it because we still have access to it, right? Think about it, roll the dice, number pops up, whatever state you need to execute the action, preserve it within the command and then store that command. So if you need to undo it, just call the undo method and you undo it by referring to the state that you st stored in it. Uh, if you still need more of a real world example, I have a canvas example here for you. Imagine a paint application where we have the canvas, the square, and then we have the command. So we want to be able to do something to the canvas when we click on it, right? So there is an action click. What do we do? Whatever tool we select from the toolbox, that will affect what will happen once we click on the canvas. Here we have our toolbox. And if the state is set to brush or erase or fill, that is going to then invoke a particular command. So then I have the brush command, I have the erase command, and I have the fill command. The tool itself, depending on the state, is going to give me the appropriate command. And then I have the canvas object, which is my canvas on which I'm drawing. I'm going to look in the toolbox. I'm going to see which tool is selected. I'm going to get back a command. So that's the operation that I should perform on the canvas when I click. Click, I get the command, and I perform it on the canvas, which is currently in front of me. So we have the thing which we are acting upon. In our case right now, it is the canvas. We have the thing, the command, which we want to do to the thing we're acting upon. And then the third piece is the trigger. So what is causing this something to happen to our receiver? And most of the time, wherever it happens, so the third and final piece is located on your client. We are trying to take the other two pieces of what happens and to what that happens. And we're trying to separate from it and go further by splitting the what happens to what in the command pattern as well. That is essentially it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section and have a good day.